Warning, this episode may contain sketchy practices, outlandish ideas and some rambling. Viewers are advised that if none of that is of interest, they should find a sailing video with a bikini in the thumbnail. So you cut it to, cut it to the length I want and jam it in there. This is the third time we've actually had the engine out of this boat. I don't know what that says about us. <laughs> Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, I'm Pascal and this is Troy. For the last four years and 180 episodes, we've circumnavigated Australia, culminating with a very demanding year refitting our 1969 Australian-built Clansman 30 sloop rigged yacht and sailing her across the Great Australian Bight. Now we've returned to our home state, we're taking the time to explore some of the places we didn't get the chance to see as much of before. Join us each week for more great sailing, fishing and adventure as we cruise the West Australian coast. Sailing has often been compared to making repairs in various exotic locations. We didn't film much while we were in Fremantle because we spent most of it with our families, but we do want to take you back in time to show you a modification we made to our engine's diesel day tank that had been on my mind for some time. Ooh. That remaining stuff can go into a jar. So that's got gunk in it just because I cut it open, but you know what it doesn't have in there? No water. It's got this layer down here. That's not water, that's thermalite because I cut into the tank. But I was very happy to see, now that it's settled, no sign of water. Um, with our, our, head, our fuel system is 200 litres under our cabin sole. Then it gets pulled up through a Raycor water separation filter and a 10 micron filter before being delivered into here. And then it goes from here through a CAV filter, which is another um, water separation filter with a five micron filter on it. And then on the engine itself is your last chance filter, which has got two micron. So far, I've, I haven't found anything in the CAV filter or the last chance filter whenever I've done any um, engine servicing. So, so far the Raycor filter does a good job, which they want to do, because I think a Raycor the actual 10 micron filter that goes in a, in a Raycor is like almost $20. They're pretty expensive, but they've done a good job. So we've never had any water issues and we've never had any filtration required after this tank. We will after I've done this. That cab filter is going to definitely pick up some of this dust, um, but that's definitely larger than five micron. We made this, when did we make it, Pascal? How long ago? We Three made it in ago? Townsville. Two years ago. A long time ago. So this is our header tank. We had a stainless steel tank. We made a new one out of thermolite and epoxy. And having a look in here, we can see that diesel has no effect on epoxy whatsoever. You know what else diesel doesn't have any effect on? PVC. PVC pipe and diesel have a really high compatibility. And you can check that out online if you like. So we were really unhappy that I didn't make this a baffled tank. I didn't make it a baffled tank because it was so small. Um, and it, it's no big deal, like we can hear a bit of sloshing, um, wouldn't mind getting rid of that sound, but I just I want to get rid of the risk of aeration of diesel, and also this sight glass is incredibly hard to read <laughs> while the diesel is moving around so much. So um, I've retrofit it, and instead of building new baffles for it, I found that it was just easier to go and get this 90mm PVC, cut it to cut it to the length I want and jam it in there, so I've also got some, um, this, this PVC is a bit dirty, I'll clean that up. I've got some other sizes just to make sure that it, it can't move. Um, it's a pretty rough job, so the diesel can get all around these, but they'll act as baffles, so a little bit of a retrofit. There you go, you won't see that anywhere else. I got, them, I got the cuts fairly square, but I knew that it wasn't important um, because you actually want gaps underneath. Diesel is so thin that it will have no problem flowing underneath, and that's how baffles work, that you can't have diesel transferring through the sides and getting momentum and sloshing. It has to go down, it has to have a tortuous path wherever it wants to get to. So there's nowhere here where a big bit of a diesel will slosh. You'll see that when we're, when we're reading the sight glass, 
it'll bob up and down a little bit, but it won't be like like a real seesaw that we saw in a seaway making things hard to get a real gauge on. I'll just say one thing about the cut. I made these cuts. They're not 45 degrees. I don't know what angle they are. They're any old angle. But now when I come to re-glass this lid on, um, if I'd made straight cuts, it would fall down to the PVC. But now I should be able to manoeuvre this in. That was a bit rough there, so I have to squeeze him in. But I'll be able to manoeuvre this in, backfill it with thickened epoxy, and do it with fiberglass tape. And it should be just as strong as it ever was. Maybe even stronger because there'll be a thicker fillet through there. There we go, that's one more. That's one thing that's been bugging me for, I won't say two years, but at least, <laughs> I don't know, at least 12 months. I was thinking maybe I should have just put baffles in there. Big tanks, big, you know, big tanks have baffles because you have such a thing as called free surface effect. And if you're not familiar with it, what it means is a liquid can act, you know, like the old thing, loose cannon. If you have an unrestrained weight on a boat, say a ton, and it's moving, you, know, you can understand it might do a bit of damage. Fluids are exactly the same. But this is such a tiny little thing, it's less than your average jerry can, and, and your dinghy fuel tanks are bigger than this. Because our, um, our little diesel uses seven to 800 mil an hour. <laughs> it doesn't use much, so it doesn't need a very big tank above the actual engine itself. There we go, that's, um, that's that done. So what I'll do is I'll clean up everything, and I'll clean out the inside of the tank, and I'll re-glass this, zing, through the magic of editing. Got lots and lots of hair all of a sudden. Um, we don't usually go back and forward in time with our episodes. We just wanted to with this one. We've been really happy with the, the that fuel tank um, modification that we did. And if you look here, here's, our, here's the sight glass. And that's just some fuel safe hose that we got from NZ, a hydraulic hose supplier. Um, some clear hose and we can just see the, the diesel that's in there. And you know, it's the, the motion of it is really dampened even though we're rocking around like that. It gives me some very good idea. Um, the main reason we included that in the video is just that use of PVC pipes quite unusual. You might not, you know, it's probably not going to be raised somewhere else. And if people are out there and they want to retrofit a small tank or they, they might be building a water tank and they're trying to get an idea of how to build baffles without necessarily all the extra work of fiberglassing stuff in, if you can immobilise PVC tubes in there, it's a pretty economical way to get around it. Um, so just a bit of food for thought. PVC is very compatible with diesel and it's quite compatible with potable water uh, or whatever, even grey water. If you want to baffle um, you know, black or grey water in, in some of your tanks, it's all doable. And that, that's why we included it. So hopefully some of you out there might find it useful. You've been busy sanding away there. What do you think? I think it looks really smart like that. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? So what's happened? Well, I don't think um, I don't think I can be bothered maintaining varnish in the sunshine, so we'll just go with my old favourite oiling. We'll let that soak in for a bit, and then we'll, we'll give it a bit of a polish up. Mm -hmm. But I think I'd rather just instead of varnishing it like twice a year, I think I'd rather. Um, just give it a nice oil. We had it varnished for a once year. Once a month. It lasted a year. Then we sanded it back. Yeah, I guess. I guess that's right. Mm. So. I'll try oiling it now. I like I like I like oiling stuff that's in the sun. Same with what's under your foot right now. Yeah, so something else got sanded back in oil too. That looks really nice. Must. So the, the woodwork inside is, um, I'm still pretty happy because that's been sealed with epoxy first and then varnished and that's pretty good, you know, like if we, I didn't know like when we did it whether we would have leaks and we, we haven't yet, so <laughs> it's pretty good. So that epoxy sealing the woods um, kept it pretty stable, whereas this it doesn't really matter if it um, expands and contracts a lot like natural wood would. Wood wood? <laughs> There's plenty of room for it to do what it wants to. Mm. Beer tastes good when you've been sanding. We're doing a bit of maintenance and it's a good time for me to talk about um, our cooling line taking seawater to our engine because I have 
this teed into it. There's just a T valve there coming through a bracket I made and I put a male um, cam lock fitting on there. If you've been with us a while, you'll know that we love cam locks. <laughs> so this is the female cam lock fitting and it goes on like that, all right? Or any number of things. What's it used for? So if you, if you want to imagine the sea comes up through a, a valve that's on the boat, comes up through here, through our sea strainer, and from here goes into our engine. So there's only two valves in the system, at the skin and here, isolating this here. So this, this little fitting here enables us to do a lot of different things just by opening this and closing that. So one of the things that we can do is we can just have it as we normally have it with our deck hose pump. Okay, this, this, this hose here is going to a, a diaphragm pump here and that's whenever we're cleaning the tuna, like what you can see here, you know, I use a hose and we can use that for cleaning our anchor and all sorts of stuff like that. So with a cam lock fitting, they just go on like that. You close these bars. If you're wise, you'll zippy tie those shut or wire it shut so they just cannot come off. And now when I open that, water can come up from the sea, along here, out there, and we can use it as a deck wash. And it's fine, like the engine draws enough water through when we're doing that. I can run the engine and the deck wash at the same time, no problem. Tried it, it works. So that's the first configuration, that's just a deck wash. I'll take that off because that deck wash pump, because I've got a cam lock fitting on here, we can also put one of these on, and that's a three quarter inch tail. So we can get some three quarter inch hose, put that on there if I need to, and now I can use that as an emergency bilge pump. Electric, okay? So this, it's a deck wash, but it's also an emergency bilge pump. We also have this, and that can go in there. And that's just a three quarter thread. And that's exactly the same as you'd find on a garden tap, which means we can use these and we can put those on. And then we can use our hose that we use to wash down the boat. I can plug that on there like that. Imagine there's a hose. Now that gives me a long hose that I can use this to empty out any compartment that's flooded anywhere in the boat just by using that. If you remember when our water maker failed, we used this system to pump salt water out of our lockers. That was always going to be um, an emergency backup bilge pump. Mm. All right, so that's the deco's done. So we'll get back to the, the cooling system. I'm trying to trying to Do explain this as well as I can without without just rambling for ages. But we've also got this another three quarter fitting that can go on there, and a three quarter fitting a thread is again like we said the same as just a common garden tap. So if I put that on there, if we're at the a marina or well, we've pulled the boat out, we can um, hook this up to the fresh water supply, scheme water, and plug it in. So that let, lets us do two things. If we're boats in the water, it le lets us flush out with fresh water the cooling system. If we're gonna leave the boat for a month, it might be nice to leave fresh water in the, in the cooling system. Also, if we pull the boat out and we wanna work on the engine and run it, then we can do that. So that allows us to do that. So once that's plugged in, you open that, and you close that valve that goes to the sea, and then that is just fresh water straight into the engine. Or I can use one of these with a big three quarter tail and the engine's um, cooling pump will suck water through here as well. And that means I can use this as a bilge pump. I can use the engine as a bilge pump. So we can use the deck hose as a bilge pump and we can use the engine as a bilge pump. And we can use the engine as well as the bilge pump to suck out any other compartment as well. So we've got a lot of redundancy there. We've got the primary bilge pump. We've got a hand bilge pump out in the out in the cockpit. We can use our deck wash pump electric as, an, as a, a backup bilge pump or as a bilge pump with a long hose that we can drag off somewhere else. While this one's struggling to pull water, we can do it somewhere else in the boat. And we can do the same thing with the engine as well. So we can actually have the electric, we can have t three pumps going. We can have the bilge pump going, we can have the deck wash pump acting as a bilge pump and we can even have the engine acting as a pump as well. And it's important that when you're doing that, 
that all of these go through the engine strainer. The last thing you want to do if you're using the engine as a bilge pump is to pull something into the engine and actually screw up your pump. You know, it's like snap off the things in the impeller because then you'll overheat the engine and it'll stop working as a pump. So this little addition here, well, as soon as you put like a little cam lock fitting in the mix, um, that can be isolated. You know, it really needs to, you have to be able to isolate it with a nice ball. But as soon as you do that, it opens up a, a wide range of things. An engine flush, multiple bilge pumps, all the rest of it. I'll tell you one other good thing to really have on there though, is if you're not going to leave it hooked up to your deck wash pump, which, and wired in place, we also have these caps. So if I ever wanted to leave it with nothing on there, I can put that cap in place as well as that ball valve and I know that the boat's not going to sink because this is under the water level. This is what it looks like back in place. So the bracket's holding it secure on there. Um, you can see that I've used a cable tie. There's metal pins here holding those um, arms up but I've also cable tied that additionally to just make it a bit tighter and it makes it a little bit more waterproof. But those metal pins there, they're the safety ones so it can't come off accidentally. There's the isolation valve, so it's all in place here. There's the sea strainer. We'll let the ocean back in. Mm -hmm. and we can open that. So that's the deck hose pumping now. That's pretty much how it is now that we've got that pump off. Um, it just, it always stays like that, all zippy tied up and everything else like that. But as, of course, if we want to use those other contingencies, then um, that's how we do it. We showed you. This is our new exhaust that we've just placed in, just lagged there to, to um, I mean, it prevents any burns, but just to keep the temperature in the pipe and on its way. You did that today, didn't you? Yeah, everything's lagged up. So that's all. For that's people all that don't know what place. lagging is, it's... It's um, really itchy tape made of fiberglass that you put around exhaust you can seal it with water-based house paint as well and then enjoy the smell as it sort of burns off and sets on there and mm -hmm. sets the fiberglass but we haven't done that very good very neat install yeah i was i was talking about leaving it out wasn't i because we want to do those engine mounts but really that's the only one that's in the way everything else is off to the side quite quite nicely and yes you haven't actually filled people in um about that because you're doing this maintenance now, but we're also waiting in damp here for something, aren't we? Yeah, we had some, um, the, the metric 12, so almost half inch studs that the engine sits on on its mounts. The two front ones have sheared. So we're going to have to, um, what we're going to do is get a bunch of rags and we're going to put one of the dinghy seats across here, mm -hmm. put, a, put a come along, you know, a little lever block and lift the engine up off its mounts, replace those, put it back on and then go to the Montebello's. Woohoo! I make it sound easy, don't I? <laughs> Got that to look forward to for the next couple of days. <laughs> Got to go collect it from the post office first. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go collect it and then we'll do that. Never leave home without a, a way of lifting your engine up and down. Is mm. my motto. <laughs> I don't want to tell anyone to suck eggs, but if you've never seen a lever block or a come along and you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's just got a little a ratchet mechanism here. Um, you've got up and down. They've got various ways of going up and down and in neutral, but just by selecting them, they enable you to, in small increments, just apply force. In this case, this is 250 kilos, but you know, I've used five and eight ton come alongs. They're pretty impressive things. So they're really, they're a, a, a way of exerting force in a really small, nice little package. You don't have to use your winches or anything like that. And like I said, you can set them up in any or orientation and give yourself some force. This one's got a pull of about, I don't know, 1200, so 1 1.2 meters. So what's that, about four foot? So that's not too bad, that's, that's pretty useful. And if you need to, then you can extend it, you can support the load that you're lifting and then you can't, you know, like take another bite at it. They're really good because like you can, you can um, lower or, you know, like putting tension on, I can do that like half a chain link at a time. They're really good. You can also select neutral. Um, I'll just take the load off this. And then, you know, very, very easy to get the length that you want until you're just happy with it select up
For the lifting strong back, we've used our dinghy seats, doubled up. We constructed these with our help of uh, our mate David in, um, in Cairns. And because we sit on them and we're relatively heavy, we know how strong they are. So this is the strong back and we made sure, when I was making the Dodger, I actually made sure that we could fit these seats under here. Because <laughs> um, this was always, this was always going to be the strategy. So obviously this isn't something that's applicable to everyone on their boat. But it's, it's not a bad way of just pointing out, um, you know, just, you might have to come up with some lateral thinking on occasion um, to sort your boat out. But if you can actually do some of that thinking ahead of time, and have a plan. Um, lifting an engine out seems like something that you might not want to tackle. If it is something that you think you might want to do and you, you really want to be independent, you might have to think about how am I gonna, you know, how am I gonna brace things to be able to actually lift the engine out. This is the second time. Third time? This is the third time I've actually had the engine out of this boat. And I don't know what that says about us. <laughs> but we've we've always successfully managed to do it and, and sort out our problems. So that's all right. When did we rebuild this, Pasky, in Darwin? Yeah. Three, four years ago? Yeah. Still looking just as rough as it ever was, wasn't it? Mm. Still going though. Mm. People that know about Hitachi alternators might be wondering what this black cable coming out of here is for. Off the, um, off the windings inside, the field windings, I have this and it's a means of just bypassing the internal regulator and we run this through a dimmer like a um, a variable resistor so that we can control the output of this alternator manually. So, in the comments, don't ask. <laughs> That's what that black wire is for. It's a, um, it's not a factory feature, trust me. One engine out. Oh, that's the sheared bolt. Mm. Just, just again. I, I can't be certain, but like, um, I think, I don't know, getting, getting thrown around in big seas probably didn't help. This is only a little engine, it's only 150 kilos, but it's still getting thrown around a bit, you know, and over time this thing, you know, the, the vibration of a two-cylinder is a lot more than, say, the vibration of a, you know, particularly an eight-cylinder, it's much smoother. And... Mm. So... But you know what, like that, um, all of the mount is good. All of this is still sound, so we just need to throw these in. So that's really great. I should be able to get this out mm -hmm. and then make sure that that will start. And then I'll actually put it under the engine mount. And you can see down here what I'm talking about. I'll be, I'll be able to drop this down through the hole, put the mount and then put it in position. And then I'll be able to move everything. The height of this once it's in, I, I can't. I can't get it up and under. There's not enough space. Mm -hmm. So we're having to do a, a bit of a work around. And that, that's just boat engineering all the time. The two skills you need to be an engineer on a boat are to read the instructions, because you'll be the only person on a boat that will. Um, I know that there's skippers out there that are probably throwing their hands up in the air, but there's other ones that are more self-aware. They're like, yeah, that's right. That's, my, that's all my engineer ever does. But um, yeah, you have to be able to read instructions and but also understand, come with novel workarounds because it's just, boats are just so such crazy environments. I'm gonna need you to do more than hold cameras. I'm gonna need, um, I'm gonna need assistance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And push down when you do it. Yeah, I'm going that way, right? Yeah. It's the yeah. Oh, I got it. Wait, 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 okay, good. Oh, the stud's coming. Woo yeah? Yeah, it's so okay. Keep going? Yeah. Okay. Done. Show us it. You've done the starboard one, no, the port one already? Yeah, so I put it in. While, while this one was holding it in place, I wanted to do the other one to get the to get the adjustment as near as I possibly could to the old adjustment. Yeah. And that'll cut down my, my work if I need to do much alignment. So, that's done. That's, that's in and it just needs the final sort of jiggering around. This, the threads are really cleaned up so that they, they go down quite smoothly. 
in there. What keeps it in there is that that thin nut that I'm using as a locking nut before okay. I was using this to clean the threads. That engages against there. So all we need to do is bury that thread in there. At least like this is an M12. Mm -hmm. So I need to I need to bury it about that deep in there and it'll be strong. Don't know if you can tell by the look on my face, but I'm incredibly happy because <laughs> my skipper and captain, love of my life, Troy, has fixed the engine mount so we can go to the Montevellos. <laughs> Yay! I like how I like how you had to clarify that it was me. Well, it's not me. I love my life and skipper, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> In case you were wondering who that was. <laughs> Except no substitutes. <laughs> You'll have to take my word for it. The engine was running a minute ago, but it's pretty noisy, so I didn't bother filming it. See, I'm just working. Well, the next... Um, I'm not slacking off, I'm working, see? <laughs> the next couple of days, we'll go for a... We'll go for a run, hey? Yeah. And we'll, um, we'll go for an explore. <laughs> and make sure I'm satisfied. It's all very well to sit here in harbour and declare that it's a, a done deal. We sort of need to go away somewhere else and, and then see. Give the boat space to go wrong. Not much room to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks really awkward in there. It's like a tiny little space. That one's easy to get to. Sort of. Well, easier than the other one. It's like bloody awkward. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed the video, hitting the like button helps to get this video suggested to like-minded people. Thanks in advance and see you next time.